Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. In today's video we have two really important things to talk about. We're first going to talk about some breaking news for the Book of Boba Fett and the second part of this video is going to explore how we're witnessing the creation of the Star Wars Rebels sequel in the form of the Mandoverse. Kind of like two videos in one. But without much further ado my dear friends and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So we're going to start with the Book of Boba Fett and as we know Empire Magazine have an exclusive coming out in three days time but they've released a preview early and in an exclusive interview Jon Favreau has revealed a very important plot point so let's dive straight into it. The Book of Boba Fett explores the power vacuum left by Jabba the Hutt and they also include some new images. Super exciting, let's read it. What a difference five years makes. When Return of the Jedi saw Jabba the Hutt go down in flames on his exploding sail barge, it marked a heroic moment for Luke Skywalker and his friends and a changing of the guards in the criminal underworld of the Star Wars galaxy, blowing a much feared figurehead to smithereens and setting the stage for all kinds of scum and villainy to take his place. As we saw in the post credit sting of The Mandalorian Season 2, none other than Bib Fortuna had ascended to that throne, before being swiftly dispatched by Boba Fett, with the help of Fennec Shand. Now, in the book of Boba Fett, a new era of galaxy crime is about to begin. Picking up where the teaser left off, the series from the Mandalorian creators Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, and of course the showrunner Robert Rodriguez, will depict the bounty hunters foray into crime boss territory. And this is where Jon Favreau speaks. There is a power vacuum, because Jabba is gone. Jabba was clearly a very strong and imposing leader, who people were very scared of, and who seemed to rule with an iron fist. You put Pull someone like that out of the ecosystem of Tatooine and hot space in general and you have the opportunity that's ripe in the gangster genre. Favreau went on to say that although Boba Fett is a very experienced bounty hunter, he's not experienced at running a criminal syndicate or managing forces. He's not normally a newcomer, he's an expert as we see him in most areas. But in this case, he's trying to transition to another position. And since the Book of Boba Fett trailer depicts Boba Fett crunching skulls, shortly after saying he's going to rule with respect, his actions are going to do the talking. And then we get a very exciting tease from Robert Rodriguez who says we'll see a lot more of his true character in this season and the way he worded this implies that there could be another season after this one and finally he states you'll definitely see him have to turn barbarian mode Boba is well and truly back. Incredible stuff guys, I'm super excited and as we spoke about in the past, the transition from Jabba the Hutt to Bib Fortuna and of course Boba Fett is going to be central. How is Boba going to differ to Jabba in the way he runs the underworld? And I think as a fandom we can rest assured knowing that Robert Rodriguez basically confirmed that Boba Fett is not going to be a good guy. So let me know your thoughts of this in the comments down below and let's move on to our next subject. On Saturday we found out that Natalia Natasha Liu Bordizzo has been officially cast as Sabine Wren in the Ahsoka series. Until that piece of breaking news, which I covered in my news update on that day, we had all suspected that Sabine's story, as well as others from Star Wars Rebels, were going to continue in live action. And in so many ways, this was not just a cast announcement, but also an official confirmation that the sequel to Star Wars Rebels is happening. But this time, my dear friends, it's not animated, nor is it going to be in just one show. It all started in the Mandalorian chapter 13 with the massive name drop. Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? It was in that key scene where Ahsoka fought Morgan Ellsberth that Dave Filoni essentially revealed his big plan for the future series that are going to connect to the Mandalorian. Ahsoka is looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn and of course her friend Ezra Bridger who were both launched into hyperspace by the Purgil in the Rebels finale. Sabine Wren and Ahsoka Tano set off on that journey to find their Jedi friend and inadvertently Grand Admiral Thrawn and I believe that this mission is just the start of what Lucasfilm are setting up. The sequel to Star Wars Rebels is going to take place across multiple shows and it's also going to combine elements of the original Timothy Zahn trilogy which is of course expanded universe material but some of those aspects are going to be brought in and this big plan is essentially the future of Star Wars on the small screen. This will cover Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic, the Mandalorian and if we're lucky maybe even the Book of Boba Fett this December. So if we are witnessing the start of the Star Wars Rebels sequel then what other characters are going to be brought in? We know that we're going to see Sabine Wren, Grand Admiral Thrawn, Ezra Bridger and in my opinion another key character 
Hirasinjula, after Rangers of the New Republic was temporarily put on hold, and I think it's pretty obvious what those reasons were, rumours emerged of Lucasfilm planning to bring Hirasinjula into live action. Given that Dave Filoni and Jennifer Corbett also included her in The Bad Batch, where she was not only given more backstory, but also where they connected her to Omega, I think it's a safe bet that there are bigger plans for her character after the epilogue of Star Wars Rebels, and we're probably going to see that in one or two of the Mandoverse shows. Now that we have confirmation of Sabine Wren making her way into live action, I think it's a safe bet that not only Hera Sinjula, but others like Zebaralios, Jason Sinjula, and Chopper will also come into the picture, but it's impossible to say how this is all going to play out. Now, I've seen a lot of theories floating around, stating that we're witnessing a retelling of Air to the Empire and the entire Thrawn trilogy, and while that is likely, I think they're going to be using the Star Wars Rebels characters as a framework for a retelling of that classic story, and if so, Ahsoka is going to take the place of Luke Skywalker in that trilogy. But don't get me wrong, Luke is definitely going to be involved, and so will Grogu. Now, aside from the original Thrawn trilogy, Timothy Zahn has written many more Thrawn books, and in the most recent one, which is Thrawn Ascendancy Lesser Evil, he retcons Thrawn's motives in Star Wars Rebels, revealing that Thrawn was never loyal to the Empire, but rather in infiltrated it on behalf of his own race, the Chiss, and the Chiss believed that the Empire could potentially help them against the threat of the unknown regions. In other words, he always intended to return to his people, meaning that there must be a reason he's returned at a time when the Empire should have been long gone. Now, when it comes to Thrawn, whatever Filoni and Favreau's plans for him, he is coming into live action, and the rest of his story post-return of the Jedi is going to be told. Lars Mikkelsen is rumoured to have the role solidified, and the return of Thrawn is going to make his story and the future of other characters very interesting. And the big question that it centres around is, are we going to see the Thrawn that Zahn created, who is intelligent and a complex character, or is he going to be more like he was in Star Wars Rebels, which painted him more as a villain? Now, back to the subject of this being a Rebel sequel, a few years ago, Dave Filoni even hinted that this was going to happen. He said that while there was not going to be a season 5 of Rebels, he had more stories to tell with the central characters. In his own words, he stated, I was really happy with how that series turned out, and I feel like we got to tell a complete story there. He went on to say, I think there's always potential for stories that involve the characters from Rebels, which is maybe a better way to put it. They've all earned their place in the galaxy, so to speak, so there is more for them to do. And it seems as though these famous words are about to come to fruition, because instead of Rebel Season 5, it's the Ahsoka series, Rangers of the New Republic, The Mandalorian Season 3 and 4, and maybe even The Book of Boba Fett. And combined, all of these series are going to give us answers that are going to change the landscape of Star Wars. And to start with at least, all of our eyes are going to be centred on Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren as they set out in the Unknown Regions to find Ezra. I've mentioned this before, but I truly believe that the main element from all of Zahn's work that's going to come into play in the Mandalorian universe is the larger threat to the galaxy, which are the evil Grisk. Maybe in their time together in the Unknown Regions, Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ezra were forced to team up to fight a larger threat. The Chiss valued Force sensitives and used them for their intuition and also their navigational abilities. The Chiss branded Force users as Skywalkers, and in their time since the Rebels finale, maybe Thrawn has been using Ezra for his abilities and we simply don't know where they ended up. Knowing the creative talent of Dave Filoni, I'm sure we are in for a plot twist or two. So that covers Ahsoka, Sabine Wren, Ezra and Thrawn, but what about Hera Syndulla? How is her story going to play into the Mandoverse? As I mentioned earlier, the Bad Batch Season 1 set up a possible friendship that will continue further down the timeline post Return of the Jedi, and this is with Omega. I think the most likely option is the Ahsoka series, or maybe even Rangers of the New Republic. Now, there's always a chance that Hera Syndulla, Omega and Ahsoka will appear in the Andor series, and even though it's not part of the Mandalorian spin-offs, it could set up something big for later on in the timeline. But I think Filoni wants to tell Hera's story from after the Rebels finale, so after episode 6. And in the same vein, because we're talking about a Rebel sequel, another character we have to consider who already made her live-action debut in The Mandalorian Season 2 is Bo-Katan Kreese. We are all anticipating her to have a massive role in The Mandalorian Season 3, now that Din Djarin has the Darksaber, but we can also hope in a different show 
for a reunion with Ahsoka, either in a future season of Mando or the Ahsoka series. And it's obvious that they stayed in touch because Bo-Katan knew about Ahsoka's whereabouts on Corvus, which she revealed to Din Djarin. What I'm getting at is, there's going to be a massive overarching plan that Filoni and Favreau have set up, and it really is going to incorporate elements of the original Zahn trilogy, Star Wars Rebels, and of course The Mandalorian. When you realise this, it really hits you that we are experiencing one of the most exciting times to be a Star Wars fan. How it's all going to come together is unknown, but I have no doubt it's going to be epic. I've always hoped that eventually, these Mando related shows are going to accumulate in the form of one massive movie, kind of like an endgame style finale. I personally believe this is where it's all leading, and we can only hope for it. But the implications of everything we're about to witness are going to be massive on canon. But let me know your thoughts of this in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And where do you think all of this is leading? Do you think we're witnessing a Star Wars Rebels sequel or is it something different altogether? But otherwise, my dear friends, I'm wishing you an amazing day. May the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg and I'll see you tomorrow.